So, Chris, awesome to have you on. I've been trying to Always get you a pleasure. on for like a few weeks or something since you put out that um, second one. Actually, it's been a while now. Smoke of the Oracles. The Smoke Cannabis of the Oracles. Ancient Greece. Cannabis in Ancient Greece. So, the Can of Awesome one, how long ago was that one out? I guess that came out uh, last uh, May, I think it was. And it's up to about 70,000 views now there on yeah. YouTube. Yeah, it is. It's... Um, it's pretty, it's very popular because it's right on the front page of our um, YouTube page. It's one of the most popular ones we have. So oh, cool. It's pick, cool. really picking up. Obviously, this is an issue that people are really interested in. This is something that is very close to your heart. You've been working on this for a long time. You've published several books, three of them, yep. on this subject or s related subjects. So really, this idea, um, the first one is about cannabossum. So really, I guess I thought I'd ask you in the first place, what is this cannabossum? What is that word? Well, cannabossum is this Hebrew term that uh, Sula Bennett, who was a, a, an anthropologist and etymologist uh, working out of Poland in the 1930s, uh, said was originally a reference to cannabis, and that was mistranslated as calamus when the Hebrew text were translated into Greek. You know, a lot of the translators weren't like botanists and things like that. They didn't know all the plants. And so this uh, simple mistranslation took place. Uh, and then this mistranslation followed through in later the King James Version and later Bibles, although mm. some modern Bibles translate it now as fragrant cane, which is slightly more accurate. And that's basically what the term cannabis itself, you know, when you, when you mm. start breaking down the etymology of the term, means. And. Uh, um, we, we know this is the case because uh, uh, the cannabossum came in on trade routes uh, with the Indo-European groups who referred to the plant as canna, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, um, the, the Hebrews adopted. Then they added their own uh, adjective bossum, which means fragrant, to the term cannabossum, making cannabossum, and then eventually this led to the term cannabis as well. Right. Um, and so uh, um, it appears first in Exodus 30:23, where God, uh, who first appears to Moses in flames of fire within a burning bush. In a is, burning bush. Which well. is kind of symbolic. And he commands uh, Moses to make this uh, holy anointing oil with about uh, eight pounds of cannabis, a uh, bunch of myrrh and cinnamon and cassia into about a gallon and a half of olive oil. And every time that Moses is to speak to the Lord. He's to put this oil on his body, and your, your skin is a big organ, and THC, fatty soluble, can pass through the skin membrane. Right. A health candidate has actually done studies on this. And um, also, he would place some of this oil on the altar of incense, kind of like doing a dab on, a, on, a, on the altar. Right. And he would speak to the Lord in the pillar of smoke over the incense altar. So in Hebrew, the pillar of smoke is referred to as the Shekinah, and it represents the physical presence of God in the temple or the tent of the meeting. And so unless there's that pillar of smoke, God's just not in the temple, right? <laughs> and so when you, you know, it's important to remember, too, that the term calamus, the, 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 the mistranslation of calamus. Yeah, what's calamus? Calamus is a, um, another common marsh root, and uh, the canna, canna is uh, described as an item of trade. Uh, that's very precious spice, which cannabis was and was uh, on these exact trade routes we now know from lots of archaeological evidence and right. stuff. So why uh, did those two get confused? How did that even well, there's get uh, similar uh, names, you know what I mean? I right. guess I'm not really Just sure. Just the etymology, yeah, probably. Some, yeah. But the, pl uh, the plants uh, themselves are not But cannabis itself similar. is psychoactive, but it can be quite toxic. Oh, okay. So it wouldn't uh, um, uh, disclude any sort of psychoactivity right. if it was cannabis. But cannabossum uh, is, we, we can take a look at the similar term, cannabu, uh, which was used by the Assyrians and the Babylonians. They used it in exactly the same way. We have lots of transcriptions uh, um, from the Assyrians regarding the use of cannabis, and they would burn it in the temple as an incense. It was uh, identified as one of the main items for the sacred rites, mm -hmm. but there's also references to these sort of topical ointments, which, uh, according to the Assyrian references, were used for opening w one's ear to God, right? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And the ancient temple scene in, in, in ancient uh, Syria, Babylonia, all through Mesopotamia and the Mideast was pretty uh, kind of a common kind of scene. There would be the use of these cannabis-based uh, incenses, anointing oils, as well as ingested probably psychoactives. You know, they, whatever would have, they would have come into contact with uh, would have been incorporated and considered imbued with, with magical properties, just like all primitive cultures do. And uh, this is how shamanism rises up, right? Right. And uh, the temple scene was kind of like there'd be people in costumes, wing costumes, costumes, masks, much like Native Americans wear here still, you know, in, in rituals and things. And uh, there'd be statues in there. Then there'd be these burning cannabis incense and music playing, lyres and drums beating. And they would create this repetitive uh, beat, and that would kind of help to invoke a kind of right brain trance, kind of like right. what rappers do when they lay down a beat and then they start rapping to it. Yeah. Agent prophets would kind of get into this vibe with the use of psychoactives, the music and the drumming, and then they would start uh, um, spewing out these, these words and stuff like that. And this would all be written down as, <laughs> as holy writ. They were freestyling. 
freestyling. Yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> you know, well, and, and that creative process was thought to be like the inspiration coming from right. like, from God. You know. Well, and and as part of it, of course, this rhythmic idea and using the the ca cannabis to actually reach this state of gnosis or whatever yeah. it is. You know, it's this idea of tra transferring information from God directly to you or crossing over and having this enlightening experience. Absolutely. And and of course, we know that. Cannabis and other psychoactive drugs have been used for exactly that purpose all over the place. Uh, absolutely. All yeah, over the so world. it makes absolutely perfect sense. And are still used, you yeah. know, like it's still taking place. Right. Uh, and, you know, when, we, when, it, when it's been uh, um, demonized and stuff like that, it's done generally by more fundamentalist religions like Christianity, modern Christianity. Right. Even uh, though their Islam, book is all about it. Even though their book, you know, and its origins. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot to this uh, 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 story of cannabis in the Bible, and eventually it's quite clearly prohibited. Right. Well, and now let's go take a little further because we were talking about Moses there and about him being ordered to make this cannabis oil or mm -hmm. whatever. Now, Jesus himself, the word cr Christ, is Christos, the christened one, or cr yeah. the one who christens, or is that what it is? Yeah. And so he, now explain how that fits well, into Well, that's this all related thing. to the Messiah is basically the Hebrew term for the anointed one right. and makes reference to the one that was, the, this anointing oil uh, was strictly prohibited to the priests and then later uh, during, when they started having kings, it was prohibited to the priests and kings. So you had to be of a special elite class to partake of this uh, potent psych psychoactive sacrament, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, one of the things that uh, in the story of Jesus, you know, what we know from the, the Gnostic text, Nagamati Library, and also some uh, sparse references in the New Testament remain, mm -hmm. is that Jesus baptized none of his disciples, but he sent out the 12 apostles uh, with anointing oil to heal sick and cast out demons. And this is in the oldest of the synoptic texts, huh. Mark which is the oldest of the Gospels. And uh, to cast out demons in the ancient world, up until medieval times actually, uh, was thought to be like uh, uh, demonic possession, epilepsy, diseases like yeah, that, which cannabis you. is known to be very effective for, uh, were thought to be demonic possession. And to cure somebody of an ailment like that was to actually rid them of this possession. So these types of substances would be used uh, in, in conjunction with prayers, you know, kind of a shamanic <coughs> ritual, and the use of these psychoactive substances. And, uh, you know, it would have an actual medically healing qualities right <coughs> now we were talking uh, we, you mentioned the name Sula Bennett in the beginning and I wanted That's to go right. into exactly how <laughs> we really know that this word because there's a obviously this is a controversial subject yeah I mean this is not just <laughs> accepted widely or anything like that now there's a, a guy named dr. Carl Ruck Ashley you want some of this here Carl Ruck as well right and is an etymologist and linguist mm-hmm and uh, um, he as well supports the idea that cannabosum is cannabis. Dr. Ethan Russo, a, right. uh, probably the foremost cannabis uh, medical researcher in the world, but who's also written extensively about the history of cannabis. He as well. That was good, <laughs> good stuff, to this. whatever was in yeah. there. <laughs> oh, and the uh, um, he, uh, <laughs> he points to archaeological evidence. They found uh, evidence of cannabis oils and incense is in Bet Shemesh, Israel, actual archaeological carbonized uh, material. Right. Uh, um, so uh, and we is, know that it was there. Yeah. And, and then the, the, the similarity, gave it to the, the Scythians Hebrews, right? were, were uh, in contact with the Hebrews, mm -hmm. much like the tent of the meeting. The Scythians would burn it in these enclosed little tents mm -hmm. and capture in the smoke. Then the very similar term, Kanabu, uh, in the Assyrians and Babylonians, where we have the identical use mm -hmm. of incenses and topical ointments sure and we know this uh, and topical ointments and so we know it was used in those mm -hmm. um, and uh, um, and then Sula Bennett also traced the modern term cannabis back through history and later Hebrew ter uh, term for cannabis cannabis uh, very similar etymology, Cannabis. you know, like was obviously yeah. developed from the same term. It seems uh, um, so. Uh, um, <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's not just that. Another uh, researcher, Emmanuel Lowe, uh, um, right. who was writing the a 30s, rabbi, rabbi yeah. he uh, also identified references to cannabis under some other names. Uh, Shadanaj, which uh, he said was a, a Persian name, hmm. which means royal grain, and referred to this uh, cannabis preparation made with seeds and cannabis bud that was psychoactive. And he also refers to cannabis infused wines mm. and these were hugely popular uh, uh, throughout the ancient world particularly amongst uh, Persian groups that deeply influenced uh, later Hebrew prophets you know uh, um, that were under the Persian rule you know mm -hmm. like Ezra and stuff right yeah uh, um, so there's this whole tradition of uh, cannabis infused wines as well Cool. Uh, um, that, that's pretty fascinating. Well, because, yeah, you got to find ways of taking it, right? If it wasn't, they didn't always smoke it back in the day. You so. know, joints and pipes, that is thought to have uh, not occurred until after the discovery of the New World, where uh, tobacco oh, smoking was show. witnessed. 
and uh, generally it was either burnt as an incense or consumed as a food or drank in wine or maybe like soma and helma type preparations with milk. Yeah, exactly. Wow, that's really cool. That bong, you know. Bong, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was going to say it's, it's similar, <coughs> similar to what they consume in India now. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, well, you know, in, in India, they're still practicing a lot of this stuff, and uh, cannabis is particularly associated with Shiva, who's the oldest continually worshipped god on earth, and his worship goes back to the Stone Age. And uh, every few years, they practice this, uh, the largest human gathering on earth, the Kumbha Mela, which is all based around the churning of the ocean of milk, a Hindu myth that's largely uh, based around the, uh, the, the the preparation of bong, you know. And right. The, uh, the, the bong sprouts from the amrita, which a drop of fell to the earth, and the amrita is like the, a, a, a portion of soma, you know. Right, and so that's why there's that symbolic thing in the, yeah, it's, it's cool. And now, what about when the, um, well, I guess that's off on a bit of a tangent, so we should probably stick to this. Um, I was, about the... Uh, <coughs> the holy oil itself, um, how often does that actually appear in the Old Testament? Well, the, the, the recipe is just at the beginning there, but it occurs a number of times uh, um, throughout the Old Testament. You know, after you know that it's in the holy oil, the oil of gladness, and these different preparations, mm -hmm. uh, um, you, you can start identifying it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's also, uh, in some of the references, it's clearly uh, identified as an incense as well. Okay. Uh, um, you know, there's this scene in Isaiah where God laments, you know, when Isaiah is looking, seeking advice, it's like, it's like, you have not brought me any canna. Why? Your, your sacrifices do not please me. Why should I, you know, give you advice? He wants more weed. He wants more weed. And uh, there's this, <laughs> this whole scene in the temple where one of the seraphim grabs a coal with tongs from off the altar and he holds it to Isaiah's lips and it's like, and my iniquity was taken away and my sin purged. It was like a big hot knife holding ah, it up right up to his mouth, you know. Hilarious. But, you know, you, you can, if you Google canna bossum, K-A- N-E-H, Bossum, uh, B-O-S-M, or just Canna, um, you'll find the video, uh, Canna Bossum, uh, on it, and also the article I wrote for Cannabis Culture way back in the early 90s. Uh, um, it, we, you know, people are only really starting to catch on to this stuff, but uh, I've been writing about this for like 20, 25 years, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I'll share some of that stuff. I'll put them in the show notes, links to the articles that you're mentioning now, so when people watch this later, they can tune, actually go to the front page of Cannabis Culture <coughs> and find those ones. Um, so now, uh, yeah, it does appear in a couple, in a bunch of other places. There's actually a bunch of wacky stuff that appears in the Bible all over the place. All over like the place. Your book, the, for your first book, was it? Your first one? My second book, second uh, book, Sex, Drugs, Violence in right, the Bible. Book. Yeah, <laughs> Sex, Drugs, Violence in the Bible. What are some of these other wacky things? What are well, there's the a lot ones? of crazy sex in there, all sorts of incest, you know, like Abraham's wife Sarah is his half-sister. And according to the, the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, um, the plague that was uh, spreading from kingdom to kingdom from people that took her as a wife, like the Pharaoh, uh, um, was in fact a venereal disease, gonorrhea, oh, you know, according to the Dead Sea Scrolls. Um, <laughs> and uh, Lot, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, Lot sleeps with his daughters. And, uh, um, you know, like Incest. his own daughters has kids by his own. It's just so much crazy sex stuff, you know, and crazy sexual rules if you suspect your wife of adultery. You'd go in where they slaughter the animals for the sacrifices because they had gruesome animal sacrifices. Makes voodoo, voodoo look like a picnic, the, the, the sacrifices that took place at the ancient <laughs> temple. But uh, if you we suspected your picnic. wife uh, uh, of, uh, of adultery, you would go to where they slaughter the animals and take some of the gunk off the floor, mix that with water, and she would drink it. And if her belly bloated and she died, then she was guilty of adultery. But if she survived the ordeal, then she was uh, wow. not, uh, well, not guilty seems, of adultery. That's probably you know, accurate. That's, like, that's one of the old, that's right up there with the Ten Commandments is, you know, like on, on one of the rules of conduct, you know what I mean? Or if you have a rebellious son, you take him outside the gates of the village and get together with the, uh, the, the rest of the community and stone him to death, you know what I mean? How many Christians the, these, are still doing the whole Well, you know, like, uh, the, 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 obviously many of these uh, rules are not followed by Christians. They pick and choose the ones they like. Right. If they want to persecute homosexuals, they can find those verses, but uh, right. then they'll go and eat prawns or have a have a bit of bacon and all that stuff uh, on equal prohibition with uh, the, the rules against homosexuality. So it's right. it's kind of a cherry picking situation when you hear these Christians uh, talking about the sins of uh, homosexuality. And in fact, in early Christianity, before the Roman Catholic Church took hold, there was all these different uh, different Christian sects, and it wasn't until about you know 350 A.D. that the Roman Catholic Church really got a hold of things, and the New Testament got put together. And uh, as we know now, but there were all these different Christian groups, and some of them were 
homosexual groups and uh, practicing sexual rights. And this isn't any sort of like in wild interpretation. I mean, this is a historical fact. Yeah, yeah. You know, these documents still exist. We have the church's condemnations of, of these different groups and why they were banning them. This is what led to the Dark Ages, the banning of, of pagan groups and uh, competing Gnostic groups, uh, known under the collective name of Gnosticism. Right. And uh, the banning of that and the suppression of knowledge of that type of stuff is what led to the Dark Ages, you know? Yeah. When there's a ban on science and information for like 1,200 years. And, you know, these whacked well, up the, conservatives like to do that all over again. Yeah, it's still kind of left over in a lot of ways. There's still some, we've, we're still suffering because of some of the stuff that happened then. Wow, man, yeah, that the Christian church has uh, done a lot of things, but it's funny that even in their own documents, you know, it's basically now been proven. Because Karl Rock, the language that he uses in, in your film, is that it's proven basically beyond a shadow of a well, doubt. Well, you know, both Dr. Ethan Russo, you know, uh, uh, um, fully fully believe uh, Carl Wack and Dr. Ethan Russo and other researchers, myself included, uh, um, fully believe that uh, these these references are references to cannabis. Mm. Sula Bennett had written about it, but it was myself and uh, Neil McQueen, who also has a, a, a bachelor's in, uh, a, I mean, a master's in uh, religious studies and speaks Hebrew, who worked on uh, sex, drugs, violence in the Bible with me. Mm -hmm. It was when we started to put these references into the context of the biblical storyline and then in conjunction with a lot of new archaeological information that has occurred since Sula Bennett wrote about it, right. we were able to really show to people how this was uh, clearly a reference to cannabis. And, you know, I think once anybody takes a look at that film uh, hmm. um, and sits through it, you know, it becomes pretty undeniable that, 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 this, that, that this is a reference to cannabis, you know. But we're lucky yeah. to live in an age where you can show something like that because access to information is at a peak. Uh, peak that it's ever been, you know. Totally, there's just so much out there now. And I was gonna say, how did these, re you know, you were you've been digging for years for this stuff, but you've told me before that things like Google, um, the Google Books, Google Books, yeah, yeah fantastic resource. So. You yeah. know, with nowadays. Uh, um, you could put one word in and look through 10 libraries worth of books right uh, um, and, in one word search you know what I mean and and, and so that day, just that was just yeah never that was never happening so words. you know uh, when I put my book cannabis and the soma solution together which is my most recent book which came out in 2010 I've never had access to research like that type of material like I had then you know what I mean when I wrote my first book it was mostly libraries and book resources you know yeah. my second book a little bit of internet but still mostly books no, it's remarkable how much all information is just at our fingertips now. We're just going to see the acceleration of, in, of sort of synthesis of all the information, I think. I think there's been philosophies about that for a while. Anyways, more tangents. Let's get in, on to Greece now. Yeah. Um, because there's other researchers out there uh, looking at some of this stuff. One of them is Dr. Hillman. Yeah. And uh, he's an interesting character. Fascinating, yeah, fascinating yeah. stuff. Yeah, and, and his book, uh, The Chemical Muse, has some interesting stuff in it. Now, you look at, you talk to him for your film yeah. and talk about exactly what was going on back in Greece and how they were using cannabis. So maybe you can explain a little bit. Well, about you know, one of the, 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 the really fascinating things uh, that Hillman talks about is the use of uh, cannabis in the cult of Aphrodite. Right. And he claims that uh, they were using cannabis preparations, ointments, and lotions that uh, uh, vaginally. Uh, and applying them vaginally, uh, um, along with other substances, mandrake, belladonna, and that's kind of interesting because this is what they claim about later witches, you know what I mean? And some right. people have seen witchcraft as a debased form of this type of goddess worship uh, that carried on uh, under the suppression of the church uh, and the underground. Right. And uh, also that they would fumigate with cannabis. And then we also talk about uh, these different dream oracles. And this would be a place like you would go to seek advice and at these sites uh, they would give you this herb uh, a sterion, and a sterion means little star, yeah. and uh, um, uh, Dioscorides, I think it is, uh, um, identifies uh, a sterion as cannabis, you know, agent uh, Greek writer. Uh, um, <coughs> so we know that this was a reference to cannabis, and, uh, and some people say the star-like, uh, the, 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 the little star was a reference to cannabis as star-like leaves. Other people say that it's like a way because it could give you uh, access to the starry realm. Mm -hmm. But of these dream oracles, cannabis and other psychoactive substances were used in incenses and preparations uh, um, in order to throw one into a trance and you'd have a dream and then from your dream you'd decipher some sort of meaning, you know what I mean? And these mm -hmm. were like very important uh, oracle sites throughout the ancient world. And uh, in the book... Uh, um, uh, Mysteries of the Oracles uh, uh, by Peter Vandenberg, I think it is. 
uh, he uh, points to the uh, this archaeologist De Casares, a Greek archaeologist, and uh, claims that he had uh, found uh, bags of hashish at one of these very important uh, uh, Greek sites uh, uh, for, for, for where these dream oracles took place. Uh, um, I 